girl talk every chance we got, and it's just a joy and a thrill and an honor to have this television and broadcast pioneer out here tonight. Thanks for coming on, young lady. I also got congratulations from Forest Lawn. <laughs> the driver said, would you like to go buy it? I said, I never look at a home till I'm ready to buy it. <laughs> oh, my God. Do you know that this is my 50th year? I wore Pampers when I started, and now I go with June Allison. <laughs> my assets have always been liquid at one time or another. But I cannot tell you, because it's, I, you know, when people used to compliment me on the air, I hated it, you know, like that. But I don't know how I can live. Really, I, you're going to have to do something, because you replaced sex. I lost my appetite. My hair is not as good as it used to be. What have I got left? You. You're very kind. Thank you, ma'am. No, but I, you speak from the heart. Let me ask you here about Girl Talk, okay? When, when, when you came on that show, you were, you were so down to earth. I mean, my mother identified with you. I can't tell you. You, you were like a sister to her. And yet, you, I mean, you, you have a, your Phi Beta Kappa, University of Illinois. Don't master's, tell. Master's no, 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 Illinois. Okay. I beg your pardon. Chicago. I was a Hutchins reject. I was Chicago, not Illinois. University of Chicago. Yeah, and my master's. Northwestern. I got my MRS at the City Hall in <laughs> Chicago. Yeah. But I was a great neck housewife, size 18 with seams. You know what I'm seeing? Double breasted, front and back. And women loved me because I was fat. And, I, you know, men never would get sexy with me because my father always told me there's two things to do hit them where their beer is or make a man laugh. It's the greatest aphrodisiac in the world. Laughter, yeah. For the erecto set. It is the, <laughs> the erecto laughter, set. <laughs> yes. At half mass, right away, get it, laugh, we'll get it, laughing. So I was, I always have had a father that was an angel. He, do you know the Kabbalah? No. The Kabbalah is the first form of religion in which they say there is a spirit, but the main point of it, thou shalt make decision. And I realized that I had a father that let me be wrong. Do you know what that is? Sure. And never threw it up. Never said, I told you it was going to happen. You did it. You didn't listen. I didn't know till I was in my 50s. Let's see. Well, if I'm lying, let's add a few years. At least 50s that he had known all the little pranks I had pulled. Mm -hmm. Because he said, she's a good person. She's got to make her own mistakes and she'll do it. So that was the kind of, I came from a very dysfunctional home. Everyone liked each other. Yeah. We had no problems except my mother came from a family where the, you hear the word doctor was like Renoir. They shook hands at the pulse. How are you? A little fast today. I'd say to my cousin, how is Mary? She, I don't know who she sat next to on the bus. You know where I had my 16th birthday? I have no idea. The Moor Bath Hotel in Waukesha, Wisconsin. Is that right? Knee deep in mud, which my husband later asked me if I stepped in it. But it, imagine <laughs> having, a, I don't mean stepped. Can you imagine having a birthday party at 16 up to your in, in mud? No, no. Well, that was Mama. She also was at Wawa let me, let me, let me Let me drag you back, kicking and streaming here, screaming here to girl yes. talk. Yeah. On this program, you didn't do fluff. I mean, I remember you talked about abortion and you talked about premarital Honey, sex. Honey, if we could have done the commercials. I've always wanted more than life itself to have a show called the commercials. See, my, my job was to go. And then when Joan Crawford came in one day, it's an old story, but short skirts came in. And yeah, sitting the, the, next to her was Colleen Moore, who wiped herself with gloves on. I mean, and, 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 all, and always, always white to see if there was, yes, 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 Kenneth yes. Starr was looking for leakage, you know. Yeah, yeah. And another girl who knew she was not going to get a word in, so she's knitting. So I said to, now, gee, here arrives Joan Crawford with two Huge big boxes, you know. Yeah. Oh, and she's got two boxes. I thought, now, that's a pro. If one slip looks like a, you know, if the hair slips, she's ready with another. One was vodka, the other was ice. But you see, <laughs> I am allergic to liquor, and I got so by Mary to Harry, who if he breathed on a sore, I was well. So I, there was not, I, I had to have a backseat driver to right. stay married. Right. So we now get on the air, and I said to Joan, and I'm so excited. You see, I'm an out-of-body out of star, you know that. Mm -hmm. I played all the male leads. I was a goalie in the soccer team, and men call me by my last name. 
Now that's a sex positive. Hey, Graham. Honey, I great. No, Comus. Comus, how did you miss that goal yeah, for yeah. Christ's sake? Yeah. So, I mean, for goodness sake. Goodness sake, yeah. All those I believe believe in God. So, Joan Crawford comes in, and her, she is sitting like the entrance to the Holland Tunnel, which I already am <laughs> trying to. I had a woman in the front row saying. Wait, wait, I, slow it down a little bit. I had a woman. See, in who, rehearsal, it was the Lincoln Tunnel. She <laughs> was Howard to tell. She was hired to tell me to keep my legs crossed. I'm always at the gynecologist mentally, so here I am sitting there, and Joan Crawford is ready for a truck. <laughs> and I said to her, Had Joan been drinking? Uh, oh, I wouldn't say so, dear. If she died, they'd take out. <laughs> so I said to her, Joan, what do you think? You know, I'm so impressed with the two hat boxes. What do you think of the new skirt? Feel like crotch. She said, I said, What? I knew there were capons for chicken. I thought maybe that's a wild end. It shows your crotch. And you know, that isn't pretty. I said, you know, I've never looked. But I think I'll take your word for it. Now, Colleen Moore is now having rigor mortis. I have never seen anyone die on camera. It happened once to Dick Abbott, but I thought I was going to be the second. Yeah. And this third girl is knitting, because she knows she's not going to get a word in. So that was one of my moments of joy. But women are women when there's not a man around. They become absolutely different people. I go to a beauty parlor. They come in looking very nice. Under the dryer, we are Dragula's afterbirth. You have never seen how homely the, the silver and the mustache go and the grooming. The hair is, they have initials in hair. So, they, and they talk to you under the dryer. See, they tell you everything. Uh -huh. Then they get dressed and they don't even look at you. They oh, walk out. Right. Oh, see, now they're a different person. So I have learned about women and I have three at a time. You have been stuck with some leg killers. Now, I get a pain, a boredom from the ankle to the knee that is, you had one, the bigger the name, the worse the guest. You've had some Lulus. <laughs> oh, I where have. You huh? have suffered, I have suffered with you. I've said, get her off. <laughs> this, woman, this woman is beyond monosyllabic. <laughs> this kid wouldn't know and if she heard it. Hey, but you're wonderful. How do you do it? Uh, patience. Now, I want to ask you something. You can, but let me just do a little commercial. Oh, very, very I do a long one, Dolly. If it paid for me to... I have lived for this moment. Do you know what it cost me to come on this show? <laughs> you will never know. No food, no room. No, the room is lovely. Well, thank you. But I pay for coffee. Okay. But uh, the thing is, I mean... <laughs> let me, let me uh, please, please do this commercial. Your new show, you've got to have money. Yeah. Yes, all right. We're with Virginia Graham, the star of Girl Talk on television for many, many years, a pioneer broadcaster and a great lady. We'll be right back with Virginia after this break. Hi, Pamela. You're on the air. Hello. Oh, hello. How are you doing? I'm today? fine, thanks. I hope you are, too. Uh, well, at the moment, I am. Good. So far. Uh, what I was going to ask Ms. Graham is, what was the most embarrassing moment of her acting, acting career that, you know, was it? Well, I'll tell you, there were two, darling. One was when I had Jolie Gabor on, who was explaining that in Hungary you have to be a virgin. Oh. Now, I think Kenneth Starr was the gynecologist that did the examinations <laughs> because I don't know how that happened. And uh, Margaret Truman was on. And another woman who knew she wasn't going to be on, so she was reading. And it took 23 minutes, and I turned to Margaret Truman, and I said, Jolie was telling us all about how she had to get pregnant to get the job and so forth, which is, you know, not a hard way. That's when the labor union was formed. So uh, I said to the girl, Margaret, the girl, how did you enjoy the show? She said, well, I always sleep when I'm bored and I haven't heard a word. <laughs> so I thought I would like to do that in tapestry over my room, you know, for <laughs> accolades, accolades. But the best was Monique Von Born. Oh, I always Monique. give names. Yeah. Yes. The one thing, who, you know when you find your husband in bed with a woman who you can believe me or your eyes? Well, they were just measuring. She had heard she needed to be measured oh, for a contraceptive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, she caught him also. They were adjoining rooms. She heard him coming and ran to the next room. And I had both of the women on. Oh, is that right? The recipients, we call them. Uh, groupies. Yes. Sexual groupies. The receivers, yes. yeah. That was adorable uh -huh. because 
I've had them get loaded when they never drank before. <laughs> but the best thing is in my book, there are angels. My daddy's father was an eminent rabbi. And my father asked him a question one day, and my, father, my grandfather looked at him. My father and mother had, had 11 children on each side. They, I never saw a grandmother lying down. So, uh, I mean standing up. They were vertical grandparents. So I said to my, my father's father said, you've got to go to America, darling. You don't ask a rabbi questions. If you want to find the answer to God and religion, and he did, and he married a woman with every religion in the world. So it just, it's a shortcut to God. But angels have always watched me. Monty Morgan, my producer, made me. I am the product of the greatest producer that Is ever Is that lived. right? He was Jack Parr's hooker booker. And he... It's Jack Parr's what? Hooker booker. Oh. They made rugs, my mother thought, yes. Oh. So, uh, <laughs> so he was given the assignment of a show. And they wanted uh, some other woman, but she couldn't talk very well. So he had seen me on a local show. I had a local talk show opposite nothing with no rating. So he said, I think she'd be very good. So I got this? Monty Morgan. Oh, Monty Morgan, the He's producer. He's my angel. Right. The second my book is by, with Carmen DeSensa. He is the only person in the world I've ever told the truth. I have never in 45 years told the truth on the show. Is that right? Isn't that wonderful? Beautiful. Now, I'll tell you, because I'm anti-semantic. Jewish people, semantic. Semantic. Yes. Everybody thinks they're telling the truth. Even Falwell, whom I have to look, he's my Malax moment. I think he absolutely thinks he's being religious, using the worst words, yeah. creating a hatred for the third sex, which are my best friends in the world, the most talented people in the world. Sports people are supposed to be the dirty bums. Those are the images. They worry about Clinton. He's a grandfather, for God's sake. And M M Monica, well, she's what you would call uh, born wise. <laughs> Very born wise. She was uh, deflowered at birth. Let yes. me say good night to fair Pamela. Pamela, thank okay, you for uh, watching. Pamela, you've been on all the time. Yeah. Well, that's fine. I don't mind. I love talk, listening to people talk. It's enjoying. I oh, enjoy you, this. You're uh, a doll, Pamela. Pamela. Well, uh, thank you. And I want to ask you, uh, is there any way I can get your name and stuff so I can get a autograph from you, maybe? You, when my book comes out, honey, I'll give it to you retail. I mean wholesale. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've never known a Jew to buy retail, but I promise you I will give you one. Pamela, thank you for watching. Okay, and, thank you. And, and we're going to miss you when you go. Okay. Okay, thanks, You'll Pamela. You'll never be replaced, I'll tell you that. Right, I know, ain't that the truth? Okay. Y'all have a good night, and thank you. You too, Pamela. Thanks for calling, thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Bye now. Listen, my friend, the time is gone, but you'll I come know. back. We've just scratched the that. surface. Honey, the surface is not... But you know what? You're my dream come true. Oh, I have a book of what I tell Tom after each <laughs> show, that you would die. I have the nose. I need surgery from you. <laughs> when you have a guest on and they get out of line... <laughs> Listen, yes. save it for next time, okay? May I tell you, God has blessed all of us with you. You're very kind, but I do have to go. But thank you, dear Virginia, and we'll see you next time, okay? I promise to be here. Okay. Virginia Graham, one of the great stars of television, and all of us who do what I do for a living are in your debt. Thank you, man. Thank you, darling. We will continue after this message and tell you about tomorrow night's program.